Did you know a Tesla has a 47% higher consumption when it rains? Neither did I, but that's what we learned on this road trip. What started out as a normal travel vlog suddenly turned into a much more valuable lesson for us as new EV drivers. Tag along as we go on a 400 kilometers ride in our Tesla Model 3 performance. We'll take a closer look at our highway consumption. We'll get something to eat, do a little shopping, go for a quick charging stop, and finally make it back just before running out of power. So whenever you're ready, just lean back and let's start our journey. Welcome to another highway episode. This time we're traveling 400 kilometers and for the sake of doing another Model 3 consumption test, I decided we'd only drive at a speed of 110, as that apparently should be the ideal traveling speed, comparing consumption versus speed. By the way, in the clip I'm showing here, we have finally learned that when you set the autopilot to double click, then whenever it disengages, it will go back into cruise control and not disconnect everything completely. That was one of the very annoying issues I experienced in earlier videos. So I'm thankful that a few of you guys commented on how to get that fixed. You still have to reactivate the autopilot by double clicking, but yeah, I guess it's as good a solution as we're going to get. Oh well, back to the open road. Fifty six kilometers into our trip and our consumption is currently at 165 watt-hours per kilometre. Not bad. It's better than the test results from my last video. But as I already mentioned many times then, that section had a lot of elevation change. In case any of you are interested in watching the time-lapse sequence of the rest of the drive, I'll include the full version here. I myself find there's something incredibly calming and therapeutic about these recordings. But yeah, if that's not for you, then you can also skip by going to the timestamp written on the screen here.
finally made it here. For anyone interested, this is a place called Designer Outlets Wolfsburg. It's, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a collection of stores and brands that sell designer goods, mostly apparel, at most often a greatly discounted price. I don't know about you, but I feel like clothing has become unnecessarily expensive these last years. A good quality shirt is easily 100 euros, if not more. So we like to come here and pick up a few items now and then. If nothing else, we get a trip out of it. Sort of a hobby of ours. Sometimes we're also lucky and find some great deals. Shirts for just 40 euros, or jackets at half price, etc. Anyways, this parking spot was a weird one. I felt like something was wrong already reversing into it. I just couldn't quite explain what it was. Let me just show you. I mean, a Model 3 isn't that long, is it? Did someone design these parking spots for minis, or is it just an odd size for parking spots? Oh well, let's have a look at the consumption for these last 201 kilometers. Our consumption for this trip so far is an impressive 154 watt hours. If you've watched the time lapse, you'll have seen that we almost exclusively drove with a speed of 110. At least besides this last part of city driving. In case you didn't notice, for the last 10 kilometers, we were all the way down to 89 watt hours. Insane. But now, let's first go for a quick snack. Apparently food prep isn't as exciting for the little one at home as it is here. He enjoyed the show while we waited for probably the biggest serving size pizzas I've ever had. After some speedy shopping, we headed back to the car again. Now just one more stop before heading back. Me and my son weren't having it anymore though, so we just chilled together on the sofa and let mummy take care of the rest. This time on our way back, the charge planner worked flawlessly. I was able to immediately see and select a supercharger along our route back. One thing I immediately noticed though, was that our consumption was a lot higher than it was on our way over here. Just look at the graph here. The last 10 kilometers are showing 247 watt hours, now 280, and we're just driving with 110. The only reasonable explanation for this is the extra wide performance wheels and rain that gives a lot of added resistance. Still, we drove over here with a combined average of just 150. Now it's nearly double. Double. That's crazy. We'll have to keep a close eye on that, as when we go to the supercharger, we're probably going to add a little extra charge just to be sure we have enough. As before, I'll just leave the time lapse in, that way anyone interested can take a look at the drive. We'll be at the charger shortly though. Just like that, we've arrived. We actually remember this supercharger from our last trip here. Back then we parked at one of the first chargers which turned out to not be working. Having learned from our mistakes, we this time parked at one of the further away chargers. So this time I was going to film how quick and easy things can be when everything just works. So far, out of all our charging stops, there's only been a single time where we didn't have some sort of an issue. Either the charger didn't work, like this one I guess, Seems like the button for the charge port doesn't work. No problem, I'll just open it manually. And off we go. Let's get this car charged up so we can get going. Or maybe not. It should flash green by now, I guess. Let me check what the car says. Hmm. Charging equipment not ready. See equipment instructions to start charging. Hmm, well I guess this charger isn't working. So let me just disconnect it and try a different stall. 
Oh, right, the button didn't work. Let me just manually unlock the charge port here then. There we go. Quick manoeuvre to repark the car at the stall next to. Same procedure again. There we go. Let's go, come on. Green. Charging. Great. By the way, our consumption for the last 61 kilometres has been 227 watt hours. Compared to our drive without the rain, that's a 47% increase in consumption, just because of the rain. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Eight minutes later, we went from 13 to 41%. Should be enough to get us back home, even with the rain. I know that we have extra wide tyres and all, but still, 47% higher? I mean, at least it's down from being almost double. So what do we think about driving an electric car and being forced to make these charging stops? Actually, I really don't find it to be a problem for us. Of course, if the first charger you park at actually works, it's obviously much better. Next time I'll know if the button on the charging plug doesn't work, I'm not even going to try to connect it. Just quickly jump back in the car and park at a different stall. Had we also been fully charged when the day started, we likely could have made the trip without needing a stop. Well, we definitely could have, without rain. That's interesting though. I had no idea that rain eats the consumption this much. So that's definitely one thing to keep in mind when we're planning our future trips. In case it rains, calculate a lot less range. Is it going to matter in our day-to-day -day, though? Not really. While we often go on these longer 200 to 400 kilometers day trips, that kind of distance is still mostly manageable without the need for a charge. Even if it would be necessary to go charge, then it would also only be a quick eight minute stop like this. And that's not a problem at all. It's however going to be interesting when we go stay somewhere overnight without the possibility to charge up the vehicle. Knowing how I am, I'm sure that is going to frustrate me, as starting a road trip with an already low state of charge is super annoying for me. I experienced that on the day I picked up the Tesla, with no charge and had to drive it back a couple hundred kilometres. I don't mind a 10 to 15 minute stop, but if you need to stay for 20 or more minutes, that's where I get annoyed, especially if you don't need or want to take that long of a break. So yeah, that's going to be a good video once that happens. Now that we've finally come to the end of our journey, let's quickly look at the efficiency. For the last 174 kilometers in the rain, we've averaged 201 watt hours. That's a 40% increase from our average driving in the dry. The figure could have been even higher, but on the last stretch, we didn't really have that heavy rain anymore. If we're going to make any assumptions based on this trip alone, then if it's raining, you should expect a 40 to 50% increase in consumption. I'm quite sure the primary culprit of my consumption increase is the extra wide tyres on this new performance model. I can't possibly imagine this is a general thing for electric cars. Or is it? Please let me know in the comments if you've experienced similar changes in the rain and how big of a difference it was for you. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate you staying till the end. Now all there's left is to plug this back in so we can recharge and be ready for our next adventure. Until then my friends, See you in the next one.